Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to simply move an AI character towards the target, usually the player, and we're going to add in some extra parameters to control when they can follow you and when they can't. So let's get started. So as you can see in this scene, I've got a main camera, I've got a player, I've got some background cubes, I've got a background and I've got a square which is going to be our AI. Now in many games an AI can mean a companion like Clank in Ratchet and Clank or it can mean an enemy and when you get close to that enemy and that enemy can chase you. So this way of doing it is very simple and I'm going to show you how to do it nice and quickly and then maybe in another video I'm going to be showing you a different way that this can be done. So all we simply need to do is head over to our square which is going to be our enemy, the, the red one here and I'm just going to type in AI chase. You can type this wherever you want, this is just going to be the name of the script. Now as you can see we've got a fresh brand new script to mess about with. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to assign some simple variables at the top of the script. We're going to assign a game object for our player. We're going to assign a speed that this AI can chase at. We are then going to assign a private float for distance. Now we're going to head to our update function. We're going to set this distance float that we just made and we're going to use a function called vector 2 dot distance. So this function is really, really great and it's built directly in C Sharp and it takes in two transforms and it will find the distance between them as a float. So we're going to use current game objects transform position and then we're going to use that player game object that we just assigned at the top here and we're going to get player dot transform dot position. So this function will get the distance between this and this and it will return it in this float. But this alone is not enough to get our enemy moving. Currently all we've done is assign a float and we're checking the distance between them. This isn't actually going to do anything for us. So we're going to get a new vector 2. I'm going to call this direction. I'm going to equal this to the player.transform.position minus the current position of this enemy. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set our transform.position equal to a new vector 2 function called move towards and move towards like in the name it simply moves the enemy towards a given position so we're going to go this dot transform dot position and then we're going to set the target to player dot transform dot position and then the speed we're going to go at is speed and we're going to multiply this by time dot delta time because we are in the update function what well, we've got a little error here i'm going to get rid of this comma and set a decimal point there now you might have noticed we have set a vector two of direction here but we're not actually using it anywhere and we're going to come back to this a little bit later in the video. But for now, if we go back into the game, you can see our square now has this AI chase script and we've got two variables. We've got one for speed and we've got one for our player. So for the player, we're just going to drag in this white cube here. And for the speed, we're going to set this to something like one. And now if I hit play on this game, you can see that we have a very slow enemy follow and he will stop when he pretty much is just directly on us and then when we move again he will start chasing us and as we update our position the direction that the AI needs to go in also updates and he will just endlessly chase you and for, for eternity so this is great but the AI seems pretty lifeless as it just as it has no direction all it does is chase the player so we're going to set it so this AI will rotate towards the player and this is where that direction comes in that I mentioned earlier so we're going to head back into our script here and the first thing we're going to do we are going to normalize this direction and normalizing a vector 2 means that it will keep its direction, but it will set this length to 1. And this just means we won't have any weird buggy errors when we actually assign the rotation of the transform in a minute. So all we're simply going to go is direction.normalize. And don't forget the brackets there either. And now we're going to create a brand new float. And we're going to call it angle. Now there is some math in this line, and it can get a little bit confusing, so just bear with me. We're going to be using a function called mathf.atan. Two. This function is essentially used for finding the angle between two points. It's a little bit hard to get your head around and even I can't say I fully have my head completely around it but it is a good function to know and know when to use it. Anyway we're going to set this to our direction dot y as well as our direction dot x. So we're getting the y and x positions of our direction vector 2 here and we are going to multiply this by another function called mathf dot rad to dig and this basically means we're just going to get this and we're going to convert it from a radian to degree again this is a little bit confusing but now we have our angle that we need now we can simply go below our position and we can just set transform dot rotation equal to quaternion dot euler and in this function we essentially put in a vector 
and we multiply it by any angle that we want. In our case, the angle that we've used up top. So we're gonna go vector three dot forward and we're gonna multiply this by the angle that we created. Some of this script can be a little bit confusing to understand and remember for the future, but just bear with me and it will pay off when we see the result. Now, if I hit play in our game, you can see that we have a very nice smooth rotation and it will update constantly because we put it all in the update function. One thing I did want to note is you may be confused why when we usually assign vectors, we usually go X and then Y. And I wanted to just iterate that with this mathf.atan2 function, if we actually hover over it, it says return to angle in radians whose tan is Y slash X. And you can see that we have to input a Y float and then an X float, not an X and a Y. So it is different from a vector two. So now we've got everything that we asked for in this video, except I want to add some parameters that the enemy will only chase the player if we are within a certain distance. And if we get close, then we can tell them to stop. This is where we use this distance float that we assigned right at the start. We're just going to add some conditional statements that we can put all of our code into. So then if these conditional statements run true, then that code will run and otherwise the enemy will stand still. So we're going to check for the distance and we're going to check if the distance between our enemy and our player is smaller than something like four. So if the distance between them is smaller than four, then we are going to grab this code right here, just where we assign the position and the rotation. And we're going to put this inside this if statement here. And the rest of it can stay out because it's not going to cause too much of a strain on our system to have these assigned in the update every frame. But if you really wanted, we could put these in this if statement. But for now, I'm just going to keep them out. Now you can see if I press play, the enemy's not actually chasing us. But if I get close, you can see it snaps to us and will chase us. But then if I leave, it will stop. If I get close, it will chase. And it can constantly do this and we can just constantly change this. And it will just constantly do this. But what would be nice if we could control this distance in the inspector. So we're going to set another float at the top here. We're going to go public float distance between. And we're going to change this for number two distance between. And now in the inspector, I can set this to something like 10 and you can see it snaps. If I change it to zero, it will stop. And I can slowly increase this to any kind of number I want. And now you can see we can change that very, very easily. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it has been helpful. Let me know in the comments what you're going to use this for. Is it going to be an enemy? Is it going to be an AI or whatever? Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and like the video to boost the engagement. Guys, I will thank you all very much for watching today's video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.